Hey everybody, Luke here with Dakota Irish. I wanted to make a quick video about dice balance. So nearly every day, or every other day at least anyway, I will get a question from a customer or someone commenting on the post saying, are these dice balanced? Or saying that they're loaded dice and that sort of thing. So I kind of, you know, I, I, I felt like a video would probably be a good way to kind of start a discussion that I think has needed to happen in the dice community for a long time. And that's just around uh, the fact that balance has, is not really a, a big issue anymore with dice. Not the way it was like back in the 70s and 80s. Because now dice, nine, nine times out of ten, ninety-nine point nine percent .9 of the time, the dice are fine. They're completely fair. There's nothing loaded or, or, or unfairly balanced about the dice. So uh, I just want to talk a little bit about that. I want to show you guys some examples of what I'm talking about and kind of, um, you know, I'll, I'll do a few rolls and, and show you. And also for those of you who are really concerned about balance, then, you know, I'll try to give you some alternatives that you can look at if, you know, if instead of getting in balance anxiety when you're looking at dice. But I suppose the first thing to note before I go any further in this video, uh, and it's the one thing I'd like you to take away from this video, whether you stop listening now or not, and it's that stop worrying about balance and just get the dice that you like, get the dice that you think look amazing, that fit your character palette, your character or your palette. Um, just buy the dice that makes you happy because, like I said, nine times out of ten, they're completely fair. But we're playing with our friends around tables, uh, you know, and telling stories and having fun. And it's just, it, we're not gambling. It's not about money. There's not, but there shouldn't be money involved. <laughs> um, it's not a professional sport, anything like that. It's just fun with friends around the table. And that's really what I think the focus needs to be. I think if, you know, your, your table's focus is on balance, I think, in my humble opinion, you're focusing on the wrong thing. So if there's one thing I'd like you to take away from it, whether you're, you know, very big on balance or, or you don't, you couldn't really care less. I'd like you to take that point away. It's that I hope your focus is on having fun and, you know, care less about the balance portion of the dice, because to be honest, most of the time they already are. So let's talk a little bit about why people concern are concerned about dice balance. And it comes from the seventies and eighties when our plastic production methods weren't exactly the best and the most robust, whether it was the material the machines we were using, the manufacturer technique, or just the experience of the people making them, uh, you know, plastic wasn't the best. It's why we have that whole mentality of plastic is cheap, you know, um, and that it's not, you know, expensive and that sort of thing. So the what was happening in the 70s and 80s at the start of D&D &D is that, um, oh, and don't mind me, I'll be messing with the dice the whole time because these are my personal dice and I love them, so I'll be messing with them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Dwarven Onyx set. This is the new Dwarven Onyx one. This is the new Clockwork set, by the way. So just in case you're wondering what sets these are. Um, so back in the 70s and 80s, uh, when D&D &D just started, they, dice were made oftentimes from wax, but they could also be made from cheap polymers. And what was happening there was when they injected the mold for the die, they would end up with a... Um, air pocket somewhere in the die. And this happened quite frequently because, uh, you know, like I said, the material wasn't great and the manufacturing wasn't great. And you could end up having these large, what are called negative inclusions or negative space inclusions in the die. And what this tended to do is it would cause the die then when it rolled that the side that where that negative inclusion was at, the die would roll upwards and it would show that number instead of the number, uh, that, you know, below it or whatever, because the, the distribution of the the weight in the die was down here, right? So the center of balance was moved. And that what became a really big issue later on, especially with some really poorly manufactured dice because it would roll really goofy. And I, I remember seeing some of these when I was younger and I don't know, you could probably find a video of it online somewhere if you really wanted to look, but they would roll really funny. Like it was very obvious that the die was not balanced properly because it would roll all, you know, it'd be like this type of stuff like, oh, I'm up on the edge, I'm gonna go to six, I'm gonna go to six. Eight. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so it was just, it was really goofy stuff. But that's a negative inclusion issue. And that's something that happened early on. But it doesn't happen anymore. And that is evidenced by the fact that they started to do these um, translucent and like this crystal clear dye. So this is really important. This started happening around the late 90s, early 90s. I think it was more, the late 90s were kind of translucent dice were coming into play. And the early 90s really is when um, they started to kind of come in uh, to their own. Uh, in the mid, like, say, maybe another 10 years ago. 
And anyway, when they started to be able to create dice that had this crystal clear effect, right, they uh, could start obviously doing other things with the designs, like putting inclusions in them. And the dice makers were smart. They knew they couldn't put heavy stuff in because otherwise then you'd have loaded dice. Like what you guys probably would have heard of in the past, you know, like a, a D6 with, you know, if they want a six to show up the whole time, they'd, on the one side, they'd drill a hole and pour lead into it. And, you know, then when they rolled it, it was, the lead's so heavy and dense that it would have pulled the die around so the six always shows up. That's a famous um, style of loaded dice. But they knew people would be concerned about that. So the inclusions that they put inside these are all pretty much the same polymers that they're using with the dice. It's going to be resin or it's going to be acrylic. Oftentimes it's the same material as the die itself. And if it's not, let's say this, was, let's say this skull was resin instead of, and this die was acrylic, it's still not going to have enough of an effect um, to cause any issues because the weight difference between the two is negligible, especially at this size, right? So... It doesn't cause a significant weight imbalance in the die when the inclusions aren't exactly centered on them because, to be honest with you, what, what happens with negative inclusions is there's a significant amount of material and weight that's missing out of the die, and that's what causes those negative inclusions to roll up. That's where the salt water test came into play, by the way. Um, that's really the only use of the salt water test is to tell if you have an opaque die with an, uh, uh, a negative inclusion side of it, it will tell you right away because it'll, it, of the buoyancy effect. Otherwise, the saltwater test is completely useless for everything else because we don't roll in zero-grav environments, right? We roll in full-on gravity, but the saltwater test mimics a zero-grav environment. And when you're in that zero-grav environment, any small, minuscule difference in weight will cause the die to shift. And... That's exactly what, if you see some of these videos and some of these people talking about it, that's what they're, they say that. They're like, you know, the, the, you know, oh, the smallest, it'll show you the smallest weight change, and it will. The problem is, that doesn't affect the die on actual rolling, and it doesn't affect it at all in actual rolling, because the weight is not enough, and the die is not spinning fast enough for that weight to have significant effect on it, right? We're not talking about, like, you know, Earth or, or galaxy-level speeds at this. I mean, the die is rolling maybe a couple revolutions a second, two revolutions a second or something, it's not very fast. And the amount of weight that might be difference in that skull there is not going to cause that die to roll off balance. It just doesn't, right? Um, and that's proven out by actual scientific methods like statistical analysis. So there's actually statistical analysis that you can use. I think it's called the box method. There's a couple of them anyway that you can use to test the fairness in something, right? Is it statistically random or is it statistically fair, right? And you could do that by rolling a die 100 times, notating the results of it, and then plugging it into one of these uh, models. And it'll come up, it'll show you whether it's uh, random or not. But an even easier method, if you're like me and not particularly a data nerd and not massive at statistical models, you just record the results and then look at the actual curve on the piece of paper, right? What you should see is kind of numbers all over the place, right? But probably scattered more towards the center because that's where, say, the 10 is, right? So if you have a 1 here and a 20 here and a 10 here, what you should see is this kind of smattering of stuff and it gets a little bit higher in the middle and a little bit lower towards there. So you have this like very gentle kind of curve that happens in it. Um, you will have outliers though, and that's completely fine. And that's, that's where it's a little bit hard with that. If you're not, if you're not aware that you could have one where you might have a couple outliers and stuff like that, but you shouldn't have like one large one, you know, with a bunch of small ones, and then one large one that indicates there might be something wrong with the die. But for the most part, when you roll dice, you're going to get this kind of weird effect where you're going to see all these little things. And if you, you know, kind of smooth out that curve, it's a very gentle curve towards the middle and down. And, um, and you're not going to understand that with a, with a saltwater test or with, you know, any of the myriad of other crazy uh, balancing tests that I've seen out there. It's, it just doesn't do the, the, the right job. It's not correct. What we should be looking for is fairness and randomness in these die. So this is a random number generator. That's the point. Is it actually randomly generating numbers, right? And that, that's really what you look at. And like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time, it is. The only thing I would say around it is that you can get very cheap dice that are still made on the old production methods or with less quality assurance on them. Those generally tend to be the ones you're buying from Wish or from AliExpress and other ones where you don't have a good quality QC process or where they're buying seconds. So you might see Mossy Bones dice sets on Wish or something, but there's no guarantee that those sets are going to be high quality and come to factory high quality. They could be coming 
really poor quality. So you need to keep that in mind. Uh, with, with as with most things, you you get what you pay for when it comes to dice. You buy for cheaper dice, you're you're could be um, asking for problems with inclusions uh, or uh, excuse me with the uh, negative inclusions in them or issues with you know uh, chips and breaks and things like that. So. Um, I'll get into rolling these in a second, right? Just to kind of show you guys a little bit. I won't spend a huge amount of time with it because I, I know you guys aren't necessarily coming to the to the video to see the rolling, but I'll give you a few rolls just to, to, to prove the point. But just really quickly on for people who um, who you know do have balance anxiety and and, and find that fun and, and want to have dice that are very um, you know they don't want to have. Uh, any possibility or very small possibility of dice and balance, right? Uh, metal dice are a really good option for that. So I like the weight and feel of metal dice and I like how they sound when they roll. That's the main reason I like rolling metal dice, right? Um, but for people who are really concerned about balance, they're a great solution for you. Them and wooden dice are great solutions. Metal dice, uh, because of the nature of the manufacturing of it, you can't get the, the uh, negative inclusions in them. Uh, also, you don't put anything inside of them, it's just pure metal, these are zinc alloys. Uh, you do have the finishes on them, which tend to be um, enamels or just, you know, like a, like a, um, you know, a, a brushed finish. Uh, and as well as these kind of mica colors and stuff on them. But the weight of the die is so significant that these things don't really matter. Even if you had like a little bit on more on the two than you had, say, you had, than you had on the 14, it's, it's not going to make a difference. The dice weigh so much that it doesn't change how they roll. Okay, so metal dice are a great solution for that. Wooden dice are also a really good solution because they're very lightweight and wood grain tends to be fairly consistent at small scale. So like if you have a, a, a wooden die this size, the wood grain is going to be consistent, the weight distribution consistent throughout. Wood only really has problems with consistency once you expand out and get larger, right? So if you had a big die, then you might have to worry about that, but not for small ones, um, which all the wooden dice I sell, for instance, are all 16 to 20 millimeter dice. So... Um, they're not going to have an issue with that. So yeah, if you're really concerned about balance and that's something that, you know, really drives you demented metal or wooden dice are going to be a great bet for you. So just to close guys, right. Um, I'm going to just roll these really quick, just to, for a bit of fun, right? A bit of fun. And I want to show you something really interesting around these. So I picked out these dice specifically. This is a reject dice. This is a pink blossom reject dice. And you can see, well, maybe you can see why it's, a uh, uh, that way it's because the, um, the, the flower is kind of more towards the bottom part here, right? And so uh, you can also tell this is a resin dice because the, um, well, for one, I know it's resin dice because in putting these inclusions is difficult, but it's just the color of the resin around it as well. Anyway, what happens with the flower is, is it absorbs the resin and it just kind of becomes a part of the resin, right? But people would think, oh, there's going to be a, a weight difference. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, they're not, it's not. The main reason this was rejected was because it's not in the center. It doesn't look right, okay? Um, and actually, and you can't see it on camera, guaranteed, but there's little tiny bubbles right in this side of it as well, right? Now you'd think, oh, bubbles. No, no, no. That that, that means it's going, to be, um, it's going to be poor quality and it's going to be, well, it's, it's not great on this one, but you're going to think that's going to cause imbalance. It's not. Watch this now, right? So this is on the 2 mainly, say the 2 and the 20. So the 2, the opposite size is the 19. The 20, the opposite size is the 1. So this is a really good example of, of where people would be, you know, thinking, oh, these are imbalanced dice. So you're going to expect to see the 1 show up all the time and the 20, 19 show up all the time if, these are, if it's off balance, right? So that's a 3. 3 again. It's going to roll off my hand. Eight. Eight again. Okay, that's odd. Eleven. No, seventeen, sorry. And you know what? I know why it's doing that. Because I'm not rolling it across properly. That's four. Sixteen. Eighteen. Eleven. Still haven't gotten a nineteen or a one. Sixteen. Fifteen. 16 again, 11, and 10. So not a single time when I rolled there did we get a 19 or a 1. Um, we got a couple duplicates in, in other numbers, but not a single 19 or a 1. So you can see very clearly it's not weighted to that side that you'd think it should be weighted, or even the other side, right? It's completely random. And that's the important thing. There's no difference. And this is going to be one of the ones that you're going to, the, uh, so many people have asked me is, are the dice weighted? No. 
The answer is no, they're not. Here's the panda dice. This is the most recent one, right? So the panda is in there. He's probably, his face is maybe a little bit more towards this end, the 3, the 17, the 10. So on the other end, you know, you're going to expect to see maybe the 5 and the 13, the 11, the 4, the 18 showing up. Let's see. 20. That's actually on the bottom of it, so the panda's upside down right now. That is 18. 20 again. 11. 17. 18. I'm going to be making a mess of my dice. 4. 12. 3. 20 again. So we were expecting to see 13, 5, 15, 7, and 1, and not a single one. I don't think they ever showed up. Maybe once, right? So those are the ones that should have showed up, and they didn't. It was the 20s and everything else showing up, right? That's because the die is completely random. It is not weighted or loaded with the inclusion inside of it. Right? So just to, to finish, right? Like with the Mossy Moan set, there's going to be more and more sets that have these really cool inclusions in them. Embrace those sets. They're amazing sets. They're so much fun. I'm going to have more inclusion sets coming in. Um, and they're going to be really, really fun sets, and I can't wait to show them to you guys, right? Stop worrying about balance. Have fun with the dice. Enjoy the game. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy the stories you're telling. That's what's most important. Not whether or not the dice um, are fair or balanced or whatever. Almost all the time, they're fair. Just have fun, guys. Hope you have a good weekend. Love you. Talk to you later.